Here we are. Hi. Hi. Oh, man. I, I needed to know I was the we Roseanne had, had, person. Sorry. We had to know. We couldn't continue. When you, when you think of something and you can't think of it, and just, just, okay. We could have Googled it, but it's just more fun that way. Um, Before so, we start, yeah. I think his name is Patrick. Um, I think he's here. He only is up to season two. So before we say anything about three and four, we have to okay. put a spoiler. Oh. Okay, so don't get sneaky with it, okay? So when your characters both die horribly, uh, uh, oh, sorry, Patrick. Uh, now, I guess it's been a weird little time. We've had, we had like a, a gap, like where we kind of lost like two years. It's been weird. Um, everyone's hair grew out longer. What have you guys been busy with? What's been keeping you busy during the whole, because I, I feel like people f dug deep and found like hobbies, like started building puzzles, paper mache art. What have you guys been? Any, any, any skills you picked up in the last little uh, pandemic time? Uh, I did teach myself to juggle. Is that a real story? <laughs> that is a real story. That's real. Yes. Uh, and then I became, with, uh, I became friends with uh, Josh the Juggler on Instagram, quite famous uh, gentleman, juggler. Uh, wonderful guy, and he sent me some juggling stuff. Wow. Um, I don't want to say this because I know I'm shooting myself in the foot saying this sitting next to Mel, but I'm only good with the balls. I'm yeah. not good with the rings. Because there's rings and then there's pins, but I can't juggle those. I can, but I can juggle balls really good. Wow. It's the weirdest because I'm only good with the shaft. <laughs> but like... Wow. Wow, okay, we're just going to let that hang for a bit. Uh, um, that's another... In Duendo, I guess, you technically, <laughs> I guess. Uh, you, yourself, uh, juggling as well? Horrible. Uh, I, you ball, know, ball related activities. Unfortunately, I, mm. I just had to homeschool the child. Oh, okay. And so that was like, I guess I taught myself to be a teacher, but I'm not very good. <laughs> there was a lot of tears. Really? Yeah. Do you have like a different part of the house for school? Like, did you put a desk How in the corner? Big. Is your house? I don't no. know. I'm just. Do you have like a wall, like a curtain? You no. Pull? Okay. We, it's the dining room, it's and the then we room. need okay. to eat dinner, so we. Push. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. It's really. It's and really all subjects? Bad. You just you taught all, you taught it all. Um. Did you have to specialize in a certain area? Yeah, like I I didn't mess with math because once you okay. get behind in math, you're just. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, French I can do, so I was like, we oui, no, peut-être, and we were, it was good. Math was yeah. the hard one, and I cried. Also, I feel with math teachers, they're always like, this is important, these are skills you're going to learn later in life. I don't know. I've never really used a lot you of You calculate them. tips. I get, yeah, but there's like tip calculators on your phone. Oh. I mean, well, I don't... Your phone just died, and you need okay, it. That's, okay, that's true. If you're on the top of a mountain, and you just bought a latte, math. Great. Awesome. Uh, now, before we uh, go on to, uh, I guess, talk about the show that I guess we're all kind of here for, a uh, question uh, for Tim uh, as a, another show, great Canadian production that you're a part of, Shit's Creek. Much shit. Amazing. Now, when you were approached with that role and the name of Much Shit, <laughs> was that just what got you right away? You were just like, name alone, I'm in? First, I cheated at math. Once in grade eight, and yeah. you said it, and I've been thinking about it, and I just feel horrible. It's the only time I've ever cheated at anything, and it was a math test, and the teacher, when he was handing out the test, he handed me his copy, which technically had the answers, and there was only five answers, and I just memorized eight, seven, twelve, point three, six, and then he uh, went, and I waited and wrote all the answers, and I got 100% on that test, and I cheated. I'm glad we got that out. Yeah, I'm sorry. glad that we... But yeah, I, I'm a big fan of your character on Shit's Creek. And also, yeah. we, don't, we don't know what... But we also don't know what happened. Like, where, where is Mutt now? Like, in your ideal world, what's... Where did Mutt go? What's, where do you think um, he's up to? Well, first of all, I'm happy my name wasn't Roland Shit. Because that okay. was... Okay. Yeah. So, Mutt worked out pretty good. Okay. Um, you know, I think in a perfect world, he, he's gone back to the Pinecone Festival. 
okay. and in some capacity, he found love there. And um, yeah, he's he's at the Pinecone Festival doing Pinecone lovey things. Great, as we all should. Yeah. Why not? It is the season. This is fall is here. Pine cones and pumpkins, right? Okay. Uh, and now, uh, when on Earp, uh, so many uh, Earpers, we're, we're called Earpers, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. I don't want to mess that up. Got to keep the fan name straight. Uh, it was a, a bit of a, I mean, not to like open up like a, you know, it's kind of a weird like ending of everything. Patrick, spoilers. Not really, I guess, kind of, maybe. But yeah, I know there was talks of like another season and things kind of like, you know, <laughs> Ended the way they did, and we kind of the show came to an, it came to an end. Maybe we didn't get to see out certain you know character arcs and things like that. I guess maybe a bit of a spoiler. Uh, I guess we're in spoiler territory now. I just realized. Great. I don't think I can continue with this question. Do it. Do it. He's, he's I, I kind of want to. I just kind of want to know. Like any, any any loose ends that you were hoping that would get that could get resolved, or any 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 way that you would kind of like to you come back for like one more you know like two hour special. What would we want to really like tie up that you felt just needed? Because I, I feel like when you're shooting a, a season that you don't maybe necessarily know what's going to be the last, you know, things change, and then you, you know you didn't maybe have a chance to say goodbye. How would you have liked to have done that if you could kind of come back? Where, where do you think these characters should go to really kind of close things? Do we have a? Well, I'm. I actually feel really fortunate in the arc that we got. To be honest. Okay, you are. Okay. Yeah, I think um, especially us. Yeah. We got really lucky. There was a lot of stuff that had to be dealt with. Obviously, yeah. we couldn't deal with all of it, but I felt like we dealt with it really good. Like, I was really proud of the way. But the, the most amazing thing about that show is you could just reopen the story again tomorrow. Like, even though we got our shit together, we never have our shit together for very long anyway. Yeah. So it's, yeah. <laughs> it's quite easy to just, yeah. But I, I was... I was really happy, actually. With you were? Okay, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like it was, a good, it was a good ending, but no, it was odd how well it kind of worked out, not knowing that it was going to be the end. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's, that wasn't the goal when we shot the season, but any, anything that you would, would have liked to, to have thrown in there to really kind of close things up? Any, um, anything that you felt? Well, we never... I don't think we ever wrapped Eve up in the Garden of Eden. Okay. So that would be interesting to see where that would go. Yeah. But I kind of felt like that's on brand for our show. Yeah, okay. Like, a lot, of, a lot of the time, like, our main story arcs were like, meh, let's just get to, like, Doc and Winona fighting and kissing. Or let's get to, you know, way hot kissing. Like, the good stuff. <laughs> like, season two, we had the arc with the blood oath. And, then like, we never dealt with that. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, true. I don't think anybody cared. I don't see anybody rape. What happened with the blood oath? Yeah, yeah, so well, those, we actually had to get rid of those people. There was quite a big, oh, really? a big uprising yeah. about the blood oath society. Yeah, okay. We had to remove them Understood. earlier, but Understood. it's a. You don't know about this? No, I hadn't heard. Yeah, it's a whole. Google yeah. it. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I guess it is. It's true. Having a show that's like kind of like you know fly by the seat of your pants kind of thing, and it's kind of you know. Kind of fun. I know a lot of people I know talking to over the years, we've done these panels before, it's kind of cool to hear everyone's favorites and things like that, which I'm sure we will uh, get to soon. So if you guys have uh, questions, uh, you erpers out there, we are going to uh, raise hands, and then we have a mic runner that will run question. Yeah, there you go. Okay, great. There's our, what, what, what is your name? Oh, uh, Nicholas. Nicholas. All right, Nicholas. Give it up for Nicholas. So Nicholas is the person that you want if you have a question. So uh, raise your hand, try to get Nicholas's attention, and we'll just kind of like file through um, questions. Remember, for Patrick, we're not past season two. Um, <laughs> I already stumbled through a really weird question about the end of the show, which was stupid to do after we talked about Patrick. No, no, Patrick's so good. He just needs a heads up. He's got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I mean that, that massive death scene was pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so let's let's start let's start with you. Go ahead. So to keep Patrick, you know, no spoilers. I love Winona Earp, but I don't think I'm ever gonna get this chance in life again. Oh God. What's it like being Mrs. McMurray? Uh, <laughs> like the difference between getting ready to play Winona Earp. Yeah. Yeah. I have to imagine is very different from. I just show up. Mrs. McMurray. Yeah. Well, yeah, Letterkenny's Thanks. fun. It shoots really quickly. We shoot, like, the whole season in a month or something. 
Um, and so you, you don't, yeah, there's no, uh, it's like going on a working vacation. Everybody's really chill. It's just so, it's actually really hard. Like you said on Schitt's Creek, like comedy is hard. Comedy is like you, the most stressful thing because the whole point is to make somebody laugh. And if you can't, then why are you shooting the thing? So, um, and yet, uh, it moves so fast that um, it's it's really nice. And there's no pressure on me. Nobody cares what number 18 is doing. You know what I mean? Like, nobody cares about this character who, like, people love her, but, you know, not the end of the world if I mess up. So, it's nice. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Cool, thank you. I like to imagine there's like a Canadian cinematic universe where all the Canadian productions are a part of the same world. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. that'd be fun to imagine that like they all coexist. We could do crossovers. Yeah, like Winona goes to Corner Gas or something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That Bo would... Smith would love that. Oh my God, he would. Oh, he'd love it. Yeah. I like how you went to Corner Gas right away. That's okay. Well, small town, small town. I, 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 yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Dog River, Saskatchewan. Yeah. Shout out to Dog River. Yeah, I no did one? that for you, by the way. He's from Saskatchewan. Anyway. It's true, you did. Um, anyone from Saskatchewan here, by the way? No? Okay. Yeah, Great. there was one. They might not be here, but there's one. Yeah. There is one. Yeah. I'm oh, not that alone. That is true. You're right. Yeah. There's one. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, oh, Nicholas. There you are. Lost you. Go ahead. Turn on. Oh. Hi. Hi. Scooch. Um, so... You guys both just recently worked together on Surreal Estate, and to incorporate Winona Earp in that, what's the most surreal moment you guys had with this fandom? Ooh. Sorry, I dropped the bombs. Le the, what's the most surreal? Surreal moment we've had yeah, with like this fandom? I'll like actually say it was us. Yeah. I mean, the Times Square thing was incredible. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. And for anybody who didn't know, um, how many times have we almost lost this show? But we almost <laughs> lost this show after season two, uh, and the Erpers started posting billboards on Times Square, and we became quite famous for the Times Square, which you were a huge part of. Um, and I was lucky enough to go down and, and, and be a part of, and that was surreal. I mean, we were in New York City at Times Square on the corner, just, I don't know, 50 of us. It was amazing, with giant billboards, one after another. Um, I can't explain how full my heart was. Uh, it was incredible. This fandom's given so much to us, it's, it's not normal. So thank you, honestly, so much for the, uh, just the love you've given us. But that moment was, it was crazy. It was New York City, man, in, in Times Square, and we, Erpers just took over. And New Yorkers like trying to walk, what the hell is going on? But we, they didn't care, we didn't move. It was great, it was awesome. Um, for some reason, I, right now thinking about, do you remember the um, karaoke bus? in San Diego. Yeah, so we, we were on this... Uh, oh. I wasn't there. Oh, you weren't there? That, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's, it's a bit of a blur, but it was... It, but I basically... Oh, but basically, yeah, we were on the, the top of one of those buses I had never been on, and it was just a bunch of erpers and some cast, and we... Not all cast. Um, <laughs> But, and we um, were just singing together and it, driving through the streets. And um, I don't know, just it's nice to like all come together as just humans. Like there's no, it, we were all just hanging out and singing and being very human. It was very fun. Yeah, I just realized you didn't wear your denim. Oh my God. Oh no. We had a whole thing planned and I messed it up. Oh. Yeah. Well. You had a hard weekend. I don't know how I made it this far in life, to be honest. Let's just get that out should, of the way. So I think we just have to wrap it, wrap, wrap it there, I guess. So we had... No, he, Tim saw the denim situation, and yeah, he had ahead. a denim jacket, yeah. and he forgot to go get it. It's all right. Yeah, how, that would have been awesome. It would have been the front page of the Toronto Star for that, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, guess next year. Thanks, Tim. We could still make the Toronto Sun. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad would be stoked. Yeah, actually, that would still be pretty cool. Uh, okay, where's Nicholas? There you are. Okay, you didn't venture very far. Oh, all right, there we go. Hello. Hi. Um, Hi. I, you spoke about how comedy is hard and approaching that. Um, how did you approach scenes that were heavy scenes, but why Nona often had to make comedic or was trying to? 
and the audience was, had to perceive as comedic? Um, I think it, because the comedy had a function. I think in, that was easy because um, for me personally, it just like I deal with heavy stuff with humor. So like I sort of understood that psychology of like, oh, this is hard, so I'm gonna make a stupid joke and maybe it'll be easier, but it's not. Um, so for me, it was just, um, and she wasn't doing it to be funny, she was doing it to like, I don't know, ease the tension or something. So that's a bit different versus like Schitt's Creek or Letterkenny, which is just like, make them laugh. Like, I guess on Winona, it wasn't about making people laugh. Um, that was a happy byproduct, but it was more about her like um, dealing with a situation the only way she knew how. Cool. That's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question because I've watched that and thought that so many times we were filming stuff. Like, I just was like, how did she do that? <laughs> like, I'd be watching a scene and then she goes from like sad to like makes a joke out of nowhere. I'm like, it's, it's really good acting. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. All uh, right, where did Nicholas go? There you are, sorry. He keeps crouching down so you can't see him. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. Um, for each of you, in each of the four seasons, what was the most um, emotionally, physically, mentally difficult scene you each had to shoot? Woo. Mentally difficult scene. Not that math test, that's for sure. That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot I even cheated on it. It was like the only thing I ever cheated on. I felt horrible. And like, I mean, someone had to know. You don't go from like 55% to 100. That's, that is a large, that's a gap. That's, I mean, I would, we could talk about the math on that increase, but you might not understand it. I got 55% of math, so don't ask me a math question. Oh, man. Maybe, maybe it was a, on, like a purposeful accident. It was like he was trying to help you out. You ever thought about that one? Maybe it happened. Okay, we'll get back to this question, but maybe it was a test from God. I'm not joking. I saw this on and a And I TV. failed the test yes. from God? Yeah. That's even worse. I know. So I saw this show once when I was a kid and it messed me up where it was like, uh, I don't know if it was God or if it was like, uh, it was some demon that was like testing you and he dressed up as a person and then was like, uh, you know, slipped you the answers. And then, and then it was all actually a test. The your, real test was your spiritual. Your math teacher was a demon. Oh this God. is what happens if you don't bring your denim jacket, guys. The other two people wearing denim turn on you. Wow. And this is the moment. It probably was that, you know, honestly, uh, thinking about that it. That scarred me for life. That, that show messed me up. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Like a, was I don't it, know. It was, it was just on like cable? It was a sci-fi thing. On, si okay. Yeah, uh, trauma. Um, wow. Well, that was like a tape your parents made you watch to be like, be careful. Yeah, it, God could be anywhere watching. Yeah. Um, what was? We had a question, right? Yeah, it was the mm. most physically, mm. mentally, emotionally, spiritually, mathematically challenging scene we've had to do. Ooh. <laughs> um. The standoff was pretty heavy. I was thinking about that. I mean, we've had Patrick? lots. We've had lots of heavy scenes together. Yeah. But I'll speak for myself. But I'm already messed up, so they didn't mess me up too much. But that one, I was kind of like, we should be past this shit. And then we weren't. And then I was like, ah, I don't want to be like this. And then we still were mm. like that. Um, it was heavy. Like both of us were crying a lot that day. That's a very the, good example. There yeah. was the crane, yeah. and it, there was a lot going on. Plus, it was the end, and I think that is the perfect example because, uh, yeah, because it all of the things. Um, it had really difficult weather. The sun. We were. So just technically, we were just like, oh my God, the sun moved. We have to do that again. Yeah, the crane's very technical. We have to do lots of things. Yeah, emotionally, it's very, for me, I don't know about you, I, anger, really hard for me. Um, I can play sad, no problem. Uh, anger is hard. I don't know why. It just comes out 
Uh, so then you're already stressed about, I don't know, that. And then, yeah, and then we yeah, have to Yeah, I go. agree. All, all those things. Yeah. Sadness, easy. Yeah. Yeah. Life. Why is anger hard? I don't know. Do you feel just like, oh, I'm yelling now? Like, is that what it is? I don't 100%. know. 100%. Yeah. But yeah, I but don't actually it, feel it, anything. It, yeah. But it was a weird... I don't know. I just remember that being hard. Yeah. Yeah. That was def def very difficult. Yeah. How, how old were you when you had a difficulty with anger? Oh, my whole life. I don't like confrontation. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. I feel like this is becoming a, se a session I'll bill you for <laughs> later. Uh, so so it's, it's interesting that, yeah, certain emotions, I guess, are just so, like, not top of mind, but so easy to, to, to draw on. So for you, like, so sadness and, like, Anger, anger for you is the most difficult, you would say, that, the, that requires a little more digging to get out? Yeah? D for, anger? For me, yeah. I'll cry right now if you want. I mean, yeah. I, I don't okay. <laughs> I, mean, I, I was kind of round about get, way of getting to that, but it could be make you cry. No, I, I, know, I don't have um, a hard time tapping into yeah. I don't know, pain or whatever it is. But anger is, is harder to find, difficult, especially Same. truthfully. Yes. Which is, yeah. I guess, a good thing. Uh, I mean, you know, if it's three in the morning and I s stub my foot, it's easy. Yeah. But thank you. <laughs> and when you when you finally you know tap into that, how hard is it as an actor to to, to pull yourself out? Like I when you can't. when you when you leave set that day, and you finally like dug in, and you've got all this anger flowing out, and then you've got to like you know go home or you know wherever you go after that, back to the hotel. Do you find that that just kind of hangs with you for a while? Yeah. Yeah, I I think. Um, I'm fortunate to have you, because we've had a lot of those scenes, but we're always, you know, there was aloe vera plant, yeah. or, you know, yeah. like, we, there's ways we can just diffuse it. We're lucky, like, these characters are so great, and don't forget, we're shooting, so, yeah, I don't know what the next scene after that was, but it was probably something stupid, you know? So, you don't have much time to dwell in, because we don't shoot chronologically either. So, it could have been something completely different an hour later. Normally, that, I think that day, though, was dedicated to that. Like, that whole day was just... Oh, the 11? Yeah. Yeah, it was just that scene. So that day was like a heavier day. But then the next day, who knows what we were doing, you know? It could, I think it was the Jan Arden concert. So it was right. like super fun day. Yeah. I, yeah, sorry. No, I, it was um, Jan Arden concert. That's a, everyone's idea of a super fun day, I think. Yeah, yeah she's amazing. She's so yeah, fun. Yeah, she's great. Um, I, yeah, I have trouble shaking it. The, but not anger, no, because I can't really authentically get there a lot of the time. So for me, it's like if I had a, if we had a crying scene, I'm, I'm done. I'm like, I need like a hug. I need, uh, I need to rock. I don't know. Like I can't wow. shake it. You, you, I don't know if you're just, I, I don't know. Like if you can, you seem like you can. I can turn it off and on pretty quick. Yeah. Really? That's, no, no mint that's under, the, under the, under the Just, just, no, okay. No, no. <laughs> he'll be joking around and then he'll just, and action. And then he's like. <laughs> I know, and he's like in it, and you're like, oh, Whoa. I can't do that. I, I can't do that. You're like, you know, faster you're going. I don't even know. And then they, you're like, all right, go ahead, sir. Yeah, <laughs> it probably comes in handy. Uh, Your everyday I, life. I don't know about that because, like, I just have. No, he's not a faker. Though, there's there's just life. hurt in there somewhere, yeah. and I just know where to go to get it. Yeah. I mean, we've all lived our lives, so it's you know, unfortunately, we've all got it. <laughs> uh, I just know how to get it if yeah. I need it. Uh, so it's pretty authentic. But then at the same time, I also know at this point in my life, you got to turn it off. You just have to. Yeah. That's life. You got to keep going. Yeah. So I, there it is. It sucks. And so get out of here. Overall, as it, you know, the show as a whole, do you find it was more like emotionally draining or physically draining? Or is it kind of a mix of both? Like, do you feel, I feel like with all these you know, heavy scenes, I feel like that would almost take more out of you at the end of the day than you know, running up a hill 12 different times. Do you think it's like, how, how was it for you? What was the, the most you know, complicated parts of the show for you? Was it the physicality? Was it the emotion? What uh, really? For me, that's what so made Someone it. said staying warm. Staying warm. Staying warm. Yeah. Well, for me, that was what made it great. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's what made Same. it awesome. Because we got to do so much stuff, and you get to experience so many emotions. And yeah, we do crazy stuff, and then we don't do crazy stuff. Then we do serious stuff. Then we have fun. That was, that's what made it great. Yeah, I, I like... Totally, because you would do a really hard crying scene, and then you'd be laughing at Janard, and then you yeah, get shot it, in the butt, and it, it's like, it's, yeah, you can't. It's like, I mean, if it was always yeah. sad or yeah. always physical, but you got breaks. It was great. It was the perfect show for that. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That's awesome. All right, Nicholas, what do we uh, what do we got? Uh, 
Okay. Can can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, so, what? Frick. <laughs> I I zoned out. I'm sorry. Okay. So, being actors in uh, Canada, I've noticed a lot of shows. There are people who are like they're in one and the other. Uh, so like, frick. I'm I'm very bad at names. I don't remember the actress's name for Mercedes, but like how she's in Winona, but she's also in Working Moms. Yep. Like. What's that like? Because it seems to be like a small group of people to do a bunch of different shows. Like, what, what's that like? And how does yeah, one her, become Danny that person? Danny Kind is yeah. her name. And how does one become that person? How do you get in, like, the club? I feel like there's, like, a, you it know... It does feel like there's a kind of like a club, right? I don't you guys know. Are in. That's a very good question. It's also, yeah, it's, that's a tough one, because... Uh, I remember trying to become an actor here, and it was hard because if you're not in, it, it's hard to get in. Um, what did you find that? Well, you're in Montreal too. I don't know if it's different. Well, it's different. I mean, I, I had to come here to do all the stuff, so I feel like everything happened here. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I got a job, to be honest. It's yeah, so different. I was I. telling somebody that. It was Zach. It was, yeah, it was you. I was, uh, the young man wants to be an actor. I, was, I don't know how we got jobs, but you somehow do it, so just keep doing it. Yeah, you just long enough, and then you get in the door. Yeah, a friend of mine said uh, acting is pretty much, you just keep raising your hand, and eventually you'll get picked. Just keep raising your hand, I guess. And then Nicholas will come by and hand you a microphone, and then, boom, that's it. Right, Nicholas? Yeah, there we go. First of all, your body, Winona, phenomenal. The stash uh, that you had, thank you. gorgeous. Um, have you guys ever worked together before? Because your chemistry was phenomenal. Uh, or no. did you know each other personally before? I knew you from, I was your reader at an audition. Was that good? Great. I have no idea what the audition was. Uh, anyway, was that RDC? Anyway. Um, so I knew you, but I only knew you from TV. Like, I just had, yeah. You know. Yeah, no, I mean, but I knew at the screen test. You know, I know when I, when I read with different Winonas, I remember, like, leaving, and I was like, yeah, it's that girl. It's got to be Mel. I mean, it was immediate. Um, yeah, and our first scene was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, how did you guys build chemistry? Did you, did you, before you, you know, production started day one, did you guys like go bowling? Like what happened? Like what did, you, did you guys get together and like have a little meetup before? Or was it kind of like audition, callbacks, straight to set? Was there any type of, uh, you know, anything, anything, any extracurricular? Did you guys go like a yeah, you know, cast, not, cast picnic? And not, get... not with us, but I met Shamir Anderson and Dominique at a gun range. That's where I met them. Dominique was shooting a shotgun. Yes, Dominique was Whoa. standing right next to me, blasting a pump-action shotgun. That's how we met. And she was very British at that yes, time. Very, yeah. Not that she's not less British, but at that time, very British. Yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, did we do any? We definitely ended up going to Banff and hiking and stuff. Oh, yeah, we did a like, lot of stuff a after, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you and I also, we didn't have our stuff until later. Like yeah. I, I've said this before. I, like, I started Winona Earth, but I think my first two weeks was just me and Michael Eklund. So I didn't even know what the rest of the, what everybody else was doing. I know I was getting spit on and all the craziness that comes along with acting with Michael Eklund. I think the one thing we do, um, and I think we have this in common, and I think it just helps with the chemistry, especially at the beginning, is that we both on, aren't afraid to look at each other when we're on camera. Like Some actors just they can't maintain eye contact and I think that that's the it's easiest for the act want, the people who want to be actors just look at the person you're talking to and people will think that you have chemistry like it really is so, so simple but a lot of people can't do it um, and I think we both do that so I think even just something as small as yeah. because that creates an intimacy that then you're just like okay we've seen each other yeah cool all right, there you go, Nicholas. Go ahead, what's your question? Hi, um, so I was recently, I'm over here. Hi. Sorry. Oh, hi, <laughs> there you are. Um, I was recently brought on to a 
horror podcast as a writer and director. Ooh. And I've always written, and that part's not scary, but I'm quite new at directing. So I was wondering, Melanie, um, do you have like a directing philosophy or do you have any advice for somebody who feels capable but incredibly intimidated by the whole job? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think... Um I think this is advice for anybody is like just be the stupid person in the room and ask the question because 100% everybody else is going to be wondering the same thing but they don't want to look stupid and ask. Um, so as the director you have like, I mean, it's a risk. Some people might be like, this person's an idiot but I think uh, more often than not they'll respect you and and then you will feel empowered to be like, oh, okay, I understand that now. So just ask, ask the questions and don't be afraid to, um, to ask the stupid questions. Same for acting. Yeah. Such good advice. I wish I did that. I mean, I do it all the time now. Now I'm, not, I'm just like, what? I don't understand. Yeah, Hold on, yeah. slow down. What do we need to do? I can do that. Yeah. But like when I first started, I was like, I guess it's because you're insecure. You try yeah. to mask that with this not, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing when you have no idea. When if you just say, I have no idea what I'm doing, uh, you'd be surprised how many people come and like, yeah, they oh, help. they want to help you. They've yeah. all been there. And yeah. People don't want to help someone who's just like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Don't worry about Like, yeah. And then you make a mistake and they're like, <laughs> so okay. They love it. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I was going to say, I don't know what I'm doing, but you guys already know that, so <laughs> we don't have to go there. Uh, go ahead. What is your question? Hi. Um, so my favorite part about the show is the truth in the heart. Um, it's a demon-fighting show, but it's about fighting more than just demons, physical demons. It's about you know, acceptance, respect, redemption, love, family. Um, so, and it takes and gives us so much and has impacted us, myself specifically, so much. Um, what themes or what trait from your character um, has maybe impacted you or that you've taken in the same way that we take the show into our hearts? I can go. Um, well, for me, it was the... Uh, the being a, like, kind of to, to, the, to the last point we were just making, but like, n not doing it all right, and that's st still okay, or being like, you know, like you can be a little bit bad and a little bit good, and that's okay, because that's just human. Um, so finding that acceptance of myself, and trying to find that in other people too is, I mean, um, a challenge, obviously. Um, but I think that's the, the best lesson I've learned from it. Yeah, I, I mean, just copy and paste what yeah. you said. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's perfect. It's, it's pretty much the sentiment. I mean, anybody who knows this feeling that we have, it's the same feeling. Uh, it's amazing, and we're so lucky. Like, we've literally, I've been around the world. Uh, in one year, I did go around the world doing kind of conventions and meeting people and especially people within the Winona Earp fandom it's the same sentiment and I've, and I've met that same feeling and, that, and I know exactly what it is you don't need to tell me I know what it is I feel it uh, and it's incredible it's, it's just a, it's a wonderful um, once in a lifetime type of thing that occurs um, yeah awesome okay cool Nicholas there we are over to you what is your No, oh no. It's okay, we got this. Test, is this okay? Okay. Hello. Oh. Hi. Wow. Did someone, you've been it cursed potentially, someone put a hex, There's, the mic does not want to go near you. It's okay. It's okay, we can. What was your, I can maybe hear you if I come over here. Just. <laughs> what 
is what is happening? Did someone forget to like demagnetize something? What's going on? Okay, the question for Tim and Melanie was any time that they've met somebody, they've had like a complete fan meltdown and lost their minds. Anybody that you're like a big fan of that you've met? I remember you at Comic Con. I mean, I've said this before, but everybody else, the first time we went to San Diego Comic Con was like the greatest weekend of my life. It was so incredible, it was so surreal. And we literally were in this golf cart a couple of golf carts driving backstage at Comic-Con, heading to our hall to do our panel. I mean, I'm the happiest person in the universe. And we get off the golf carts and boom, we literally bump into Stan Lee. And I couldn't even speak. And God bless Shamir, because Shamir was like, boom, picture now, everybody. And Stan's right next to me. And I'm literally like, I love Galactus and the Silver Surfer and Fantastic Four, number 48, 49, 50. You're the be best ever. He's like, you know your stuff, man. And I was like, this is the greatest day of my life. I was, it was the best. I don't think I ever told you this, but I went to Australia for con and Stan Lee was at the same con. Wait, we went to a kangaroo sanctuary and he and I both cuddled kangaroos. I, I just don't even know what's happening. I need a minute. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you not tell me about that? I don't know, I forgot. I how forgot. How do you forget that? It's impossible. I, I don't know, but we, I don't know. It was amazing, like. I know a kangaroo I, sanctuary I, you were too. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I outside spooned a kangaroo. Yeah, and oh my God, Stan Lee Stanley. outside spooned a he kangaroo. He was probably talking to the kangaroos like, you're the greatest kangaroos. Oh, kangaroo. he, he the was best. so nice. Oh, he was so nice. Yeah. 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 You think you have a life moment. Then you, then you realize it no, could have had kangaroos in it. No, because we, like... I'm making it sound like we were in the same kangaroo bed. Like, like my kangaroo was here and his was like, it's not like. I mean, you guys were in the same kangaroos. I mean, that's. Don't we're in down, the same don't downplay it. Den, but I don't. I don't want to take your. Yeah. Moment, but I was only like, oh my god, because of like, because I knew that you would be like, oh my god. Um, but my personal one was Daphne Zuniga from Spaceballs. And because uh, I watched that movie so many times and she was the princess and then I worked with her. Like uh, when I say I worked with her, I, I said two lines on her show uh, and was not invited back. And I think I know why. Like I just, I believe I cried uh, at the lunch table and she was like, mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> security, yep. She was lovely, actually, but... Well, you, you, uh, you were, like, talking, talking to her, and then you started crying? I told about... her my life story, and I wept. Okay. And she was okay that with was... it, but I did not come back. Yeah. Hmm. I mean... So whenever people come up to the booth, and they're like, I'm so sorry, like, I, yeah. I, I'm, okay. I'm like, <laughs> I've been there. You don't even know. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. And I don't know what, what you currently draw on for sadness, but now you can think about that kangaroo sanctuary story. Yeah. I feel like that will help the tears flow even faster for next well, time. Well, I mean, I'm happy for Mel, but that's good. pretty yeah, cute. Yeah, but it's, I mean, think about you and Stan and can't you guys... Well, over. I didn't tell you, but the next day at breakfast, he said hi to me too, so it was like just the best. And then I'd seen him multiple times after that. It was the best. I love San Diego yeah. so much. Was he wearing the green sweater that he always... He has this little thing with... Yes, yeah. amazing. Oh, man. Okay. Sorry. We, we were doing something. We had... Yeah, we were hosting a panel. Um, we had more questions. I saw... Yeah. Sorry, Nicholas. There you go. Oh, oh. You got it on yet? Okay. I got something for each of you. Great. So, Mel, you're into doing directing and everything like that and what that style is like and how you're drawing and whether you're still looking to go more into directing versus being in front of the camera or whether you want to kind of balance it out. And for Tim, I, I told you this when, when you signed the book for me. I, I think you should be a leading man in almost everything at this point. You've done the work. You do it really well. And 
I'm a guy, but I'm just going to say this. You've got that swarthiness to you that just makes you go, okay, sex appeal is right there. So what are you looking for as you're going forward? You're looking for more front and center, leading man in this kind of genre, or you're like, I'll take what really is interesting, whether it's the guy in the really far background or the guy who's out front. Um, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I think I'd have to go with the latter. The latter is the second one, right? Yeah, I think I'd have to go with, just, you gotta check. Um, I'm interested more in, in characters and parts than really the, how much you're in the movie or, or, or not in the movie, um, to be honest. I'm also, uh, I'm really down to do some work. I'm good. Um, no, honestly, I, I'm, I'm down to do a lot of things. I'm, I'm actually thinking these days about maybe doing some theater. Um, so I might actually do that in, in 2022 for a minute. Yes, in your hometown. Hey, oh. Yeah. Um, and I think. Uh, <clears throat> um, I want. I just. I like both. And if I could be really greedy, I would just do both. I just think that they really help each other. I've learned a lot uh, about acting through directing, and I've learned a lot about directing through acting. So it's like to choose one seems like uh, I, c I could just be better if I do both. Whether or not that's how it'll work, I don't know. Because it's also schedule-wise hard, but yeah. Oh, is it easier? Yeah, like the family work balance question. Um, as a director, you just, well, it, like, listen, I'm speaking as somebody who, it's a steep learning curve. So it's like, it's like going back to university on meth. It's like, it's, it's <laughs> like intense. And, um, and I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I take it really seriously, too seriously probably. And then, so yeah, I completely ignore my family, which is horrible. Whereas in acting, I can, you know, like I have to learn lines, but then I can still acknowledge their existence, which is nice. So. That's another good reason not to just direct from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like step one of parenting is acknowledge their existence. Yeah. It's a good way to start, I guess. Yeah, it's a good way to start the day. <laughs> it's a good way to yeah. remind yourself you have children. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we, I feel like, you know, we've covered so much. We've learned a lot about ourselves. You know, we've learned uh, that Tim's a, he cheats on math tests. Um, you had a really, you know, extraordinary experience with Stan Lee. Covered a lot of ground here, guys. Yeah. So, th oh. thank you uh, so much. I'm going to get my denim jacket right yeah, now. Just, okay. Uh, this is a, don't forget again, Tim. All right, everybody, make some noise one more time for Melanie and Tim. You can find them at the table. They're here tomorrow. So yeah, say hi. Stop by. Thank Thanks you, so guys. Much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>